Okay then, smarty pants. Why is that servo twitching like that? Because it's really messing up bed levelling. I wanted to add bed levelling and silent operation to my end of three. And based on a recommendation from Michael, the legend at teaching tech, I went for the uh, Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3. Being a DIY bod and a skin flint, and having a servo to hand, I decided to use a servo for the uh, bed probe. Well, the results were very poor, uh, very unreliable, inconsistent measurements from the probe. And the reason for that was that this servo was twitching all the while. Well, the question was why? The first thing that sprung to mind was it was a faulty servo, but I swapped it temporarily for an excellent servo and that also twitched. The next thought was inductive coupling with all those cables. Could um, some of the cables be inducing um, a signal in the servo control wire which was causing this problem? So I disconnected the servo temporarily and hooked up a couple of uh, female DuPont wires to the ground and the servo control signal. And then had a look at those signals on my oscilloscope. The lead's connected to channel 2 of the scope, so I'll select channel 2 to trigger on. And then adjust the trigger sensitivity, so the sweep will begin when that signal passes the set level for the trigger. And at that point you should have a nice stable waveform to look at. It's then a question of um, setting appropriate scale, zooming in to get the best view of what's going on. And it's about here that I can see what's going on. The trailing edge of this pulse is um, is moving, it's jittering, so the width of the pulse is changing and of course it's the width of the pulse that sets the servo's position. So there's your problem. Um, there's a jitter of plus or minus, what, 7, 8, 10 microseconds. That's what's causing the problem and it's coming directly from the uh, Mini E3 board. Hmm. So uh, what's to be done? Well there are two interesting options in configuration.h that might be helpful. The first one is the, the one on the bottom there, deactivate servos after move. The benefit there is that if power is removed, it doesn't matter what the control signal is doing, the servo is not being powered so it won't move. So you could deploy the servo to its downward position and then remove the power and then do the bed probe, repower up the servo, move it uh, so it's stowed and problem solved. But that doesn't work because um, the servo continues to coast after you've removed the power and not in a predictable way so um, that actually makes things worse. The other one, the one at the top, servo delay, I thought I might be able to manipulate that so that um, I could deploy this, uh, deploy the probe, um, wait a little while using this delay, and then power the servo off. Um, that doesn't work either. There's no combination I could get that would give me a good result. So I looked for help on the Teaching Tech um, SKR Mini E3 uh, video comments area on the Big Tree Tech GitHub, and by sending email to Big Tree Tech, nothing from any of them no replies. I also wrote to my seller, the person that sold me this board, who said basically you can't have stealth chop on and also have the servo working properly, which sort of defeats the object of buying this board. So I came up with a solution and it works but it's something of an uncomfortable fudge. Let me show you. This is my design for a 3D printed servo strut. The function of the strut is to house a switch in its bottom and attach to the servo arm so when it swings down the switch is uh, pointing towards the bed. The odd protuberance on the right hand side you've probably noticed is a stop. It basically slams into the nozzle's um, cooling cowling and prevents the servo from moving past vertical. Because the jitter is relatively low amplitude, it means it's contained within that dead zone there, so the jitter is gone. So in Marlin's configuration.h, I've defined the servo deploy angle as just a bit more than 90 degrees, so it really wants to swing past 90, um, but it can't do that because of that stop. 
This isn't an ideal fix because the servo can't reach its target and will be drawing more current than normal and perhaps more current than is useful for the board. But one month in, no sign of trouble so far. So how reliable is this new uh, bed probing arrangement? This is the standard Marlin bed probe test. It does 10 probes in this example and works out how reliable the probe is in terms of standard deviation and some other stats. You can hear the probe twitching or at least trying to twitch but it's not able to, it's just resonating through the um, nozzle housing. Well there's the money shot 0.0045 of a millimetre, that's four and a half microns or four and a half millionths of a metre that's quite a bit less than a fifth of a thou or two tenths of a thou and that's entirely good enough for bed levelling now this print is a good one to test bed levelling it's very uh, critical that the bed is level there's no brims, the print is substantially across the whole thing um, and it's very prone to misbehaviour around the edges. These are some um, failed prints and they all arise from the bed not being completely parallel to the plane of motion. This one is lifted here and there's um, this puckering under here which is characteristic of the bed height being wrong. So that's a reject. Here's another one, more of that puckering, uh, and here and you can see that it lifted. It wasn't sat properly down on the bed during the early parts of the print. And the last one here, similar sort of thing, better texture, but warping here. and. So that's three failures on a bed of 12 of these plates, a 25% failure rate. Well here's the same print again with no adjustment of the bed but just with bed levelling and there were no, um, no faulty parts at all. Every single one of them is perfect. So there it sits, a somewhat uncomfortable solution to a thorny little problem. Um, I'd be really interested in your comments if you know uh, of an easier or better way to do this or you think I've made some mistake somewhere, overlooked something, or you've had a similar experience. Um, whatever, please let me know. Quick side note, if you've ever done some uh, prints with bed levelling, you know that it's sometimes difficult to see if it's actually doing anything. Here's, uh, here's how I verified that. On top of your Z-axis lead screw, using blue tack, stick um, one of those cheap dental mirrors you can buy. Then with one of these cheap laser pointers, shine the beam into that mirror. Then just look at the, the wall and see, uh, see the magic happening. Well that's that for this video, but some of the more observant of you may have noticed this little thing parked at the side of the end of three. If you can guess what it might be doing, let me know in the comments. We'll do this one on the next video. Okay, that's all for this one. I hope you liked it. Um, subscribe for more, and see you soon.